Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Saturday within the fifth week of Lent. This morning, we offer Mass for the repose of the soul of Carl St. Clair Rathen. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father, to Son the Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we gather as the family of God, and we celebrate the dying and the rising of Christ to new life. To enter deeply into the mystery of the cross, let us call to mind our sins. And during this time of the Lord's passion and death, we ask the Father for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the suffering servant of God.
will be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Thus the nation shall know that it is I, the Lord, who make Israel holy, when my sanctuary shall be set up among them forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He gathers them as a shepherd his flock. The, the Lord will guard us as a shepherd, shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. The grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen. The Lord will guard us as, as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgin shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as the shepherd guards his flock. He prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation, and not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to kill Jesus. So Jesus no longer walked about in public, but he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, and there he remained with his disciples. Now the feast of Passover was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before Passover to purify themselves. 
They looked for Jesus and they said to one another as they were in the temple area, what do you think? That he will not come to the feast? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Good morning, everyone. To all who have joined us via internet, we welcome you once again to Holy Rosary St. Richard Parish here in Palmetto Bay. Today is the final day before the beginning of Holy Week. Tomorrow the curtain opens on the greatest drama of human history, on the greatest drama of the life of our Lord Jesus, His passion, death, and resurrection. Jesus had been away from the city of Jerusalem for several months and we have a hint of that in today's Gospel where Jesus goes to Ephraim which is slightly north of Jerusalem and there he would spend a few weeks before he would actually enter the holy city of Jerusalem tomorrow where they will hail him as Messiah and King. In the Liturgy of the Word this morning, the prophet Ezekiel writes beautifully of the nation of Israel being of one nation. No longer divided into two kingdoms, they would be of one nation, one land, one nationality, with David as their king. That was the dream since the days of Father Abraham, when God first made that covenant saying that he would give him all of the lands before him, that his, new, his descendants would be as numerous as the stars of the sky and the sands of the shore. So that is the great vision of Ezekiel. It was the great vision of Israel that they finally become one nation, everyone giving up idolatry and the worship of one of the false gods and turning to the one true God. And in our gospel, the high priest Caiaphas foretells this, better for us that one man die than the whole nation should perish. And that will be fulfilled on Friday when Jesus would stretch out his arms between heaven and earth. Brothers and sisters, it is a different type of Holy Week we will celebrate this year, 2020. We are shut up, as it were, in our homes, somewhat fearful of going out. But nevertheless, Holy Week is here. And this week will make, it, make us holy if we allow it to. So I would ask brothers and sisters that you use this week to our advantage. Pray each day, follow Jesus closely as he walks the road from Jerusalem to Holy Thursday night when he will gather with his disciples around the Passover table, now become an altar where he will celebrate his first Mass and give his apostles, now ordained priests, their first communion. And then, on Friday, we will stand with our Blessed Lady and St. John on the hill of Calvary, and we will watch Jesus die as he gives his life for the ransom of the many. And then, a week from today, Holy Saturday, the great and holy Sabbath, when our King will rest from his work, will rest in the tomb. Then, as Saturday night becomes Sunday morning, the glory of the resurrection, as Jesus will break the chains of death and illness, and he will rise gloriously from the tomb. Only Jesus, only Jesus can take a week of treachery and betrayal, of suicide and murder, and turn it into the holiest week 
their food. So brothers and sisters, those of you joining us this morning, our prayer here at our parish for each of you is that this week be truly holy and that you be blessed with the healing, loving presence of Jesus. Remember the first words he spoke after he rose from the dead. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. May God be praised. Amen. As sons and daughters of God, we offer him our prayers this day. This morning, let us pray for the church throughout the world that God may use this season of Lent to purify and unify her. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our civic leaders, may God inspire their hearts towards generosity and goodwill on behalf of the underserved. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who carry heavy burdens. May the easy yoke of Christ help to lighten their loads. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this parish community. We pray for all who are viewing us this morning. Let us pray for all of those who are in need of God's grace. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Remember the needs and the prayers of those who have asked for them, especially the sick and the homebound, those who are struggling or suffering in any way. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray too for a quick end to the pandemic that surrounds us. We pray for the good health of all. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We have our own intentions and silence of our hearts. And for all these things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we come before you this holy day in a gesture of humble faith. Hear the prayers which we have raised before you, those we speak aloud, and those we speak in the silence of our hearts. And through the intercession of Saint Isidore of Seville, we ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Together now we pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the gifts we offer from our fasting be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and as expiation for our sins, may they make us worthy of your grace and lead us to what you promise for eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up our Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all of the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
give eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, the faith of your love and mercy, I need your body and your drink of blood, let it not be my condemnation, but health in mind and in body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the suffering servant. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini, Nostri Jesu Christi, Custodia Tadima Mea, Vita Mea. Once again, I would invite our viewing audience to make now a spiritual act of Holy Communion. Ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart, into your soul, into your life. Give Jesus everything at this moment. Come, Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Brings you her supplications 
and be attentive to those who incline their hearts before you. Do not allow, we pray, those you have redeemed by the death of your only begotten Son to be harmed by their sins or weighed down by their trials. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, descend upon you, remain with you now and forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. We go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once again, God bless you wonderful people for joining us this morning on this Saturday of the fifth week of Lent. Just a reminder tomorrow, Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Mass will be live streamed at 10.30 a.m. in English. And once again, 